Welcome everyone to a brand new War Thunder video. So today we're going to be playing out the uh, Swift F1, the new British jet. Now I'm probably the only one on YouTube so far to do this because all the YouTubers are waiting for Gaijin to give it to them instead of actually running it out like I did, but enough of that. So what did I notice first about the Swift? First of all, it's actually quite swift, um, funnily enough. Um, for an 8.3 jet it is fairly fast, its acceleration is good. And uh, it is also fairly maneuverable as well. So I'm used to playing the Hunter. I mean, that's I use the Hunter F6 to grind this thing out because S rounds are really nice. Um, but I use the Hunter to grind it out. And the thing with the Hunter is that it's fast but not very maneuverable. And so when playing the Swift, I notice that this is fast but also quite maneuverable. Um, more so in the rolling than the elevators. And you can see there, it's got the same thing with quite a few jets where if you pull up too early, and you ruin your fuselage. So the gameplays you're going to see now don't have the most amount of kills, but um, that's not due to the problem with the cannons. The Aidens, I mean, Aidens at 8.3 is ridiculous. Even at 9.7 where the Hunter F6s, they do loads of damage. And you have 200 rounds per cannon, you only have two. Now the problem I faced with the Aidens is that um, I couldn't aim them well because I learned aiming basically props, and especially German props where cannons are like in the middle or on the top and the thing you need to bear in mind with the Swift and also the Hunters and many other jets as well is that the cannons are on the bottom so while well, that means good um, well, good lack of dispersion it does mean you need to aim a little differently but anyway that's a side note so you can see here the Swift is steadily accelerating at a pretty fair rate now at this point, I didn't really know how to play the Swift um, in the first game. Later on in the games, I realised more how it's played. Uh, but, I mean, at this battle rating, this kind of acceleration is pretty good. And you notice that I do pretty well against jets such as you know, the Make 15, this, the Make 17, which are, you know, a higher battle rating than I am. Now, I'm also, because I still have my free repairs, I'm trying out different things there, so I'm climbing a little. What you notice, especially in later games here, is that Swift does not like high altitude at all. Uh, in contrast, this acceleration at the sea level to the acceleration uh, higher up, which, which will be, I think, in the last uh, match, but, you know, stick around for this. Uh, and the acceleration higher up is poor. Now, talking about speed, acceleration, etc., uh, the sat card for the Swift is a liar. It says 980 km per hour is max speed. That's stock. This is still a stock Swift. Um, in reality, it's more like 1060, um, which for an 8.3 vehicle is quite fast. And also accelerates to that speed quite quickly. So um, when I played Grand Sumer, the map uh, which is huge. Like when I was midway across the channel, I would hit you know 1060 kilometers per hour, and that was at a slight climb as well because it's hard to stay complete level. So in this game here, you see me. Um, there's a javelin who is completely um, involved on that IL-28. Now I took care of him with my agents, and you can see, like, it wasn't really hard for me to get my cameras on target. Now there's a MiG-15 as well, going around, and um, at this point. I try and turn around with the MiG-15 just to see how uh, the Swift fares. Now, like I told you, this is um, after playing the Hunter, and the Swift is far more than the Hunter. But as I see here, it's not that quite as movable as the MiG-15 is. In terms of the energy retention from the Swift, um, if you go in the vertical, you'll probably lose a lot of energy. This isn't exactly the best energy retaining plane how um, fast or how maneuverable it is but as you can see here like I saw that out 400 meters um, I wasn't cycling off that high and I wasn't maneuvering, maneuvering but uh, you know you should probably just stay low and slow or low and fast and you see here me being me I tested out I wanted to see damage more because like my whole tail end was black and I was moving pretty well so I pressed O, but also pressed I because back fingers and sort of energy. Okay. So you can see here the Mickey T is easily outserving me. 
no issue. He's also out here another new team this, which you know, the other. And also I do have problems aiming. You know, if you're a good shot with the Aidens, then you should have no problem getting those kills. I guess another Mick 15 here because I realise he's going for the Alpha 8 and the original Mick 15 is being chased by another Mick 15. So there was no point really in staying there and not helping out the Alpha 28. So the problem with the Swift is that it's kind of like an awkward position um, in terms of its play style. So for example, if you look at the American tech tree, you can see that um, like left hand side, I think the um, army fighters, they're all kind of the same thing, the jets. So you have the P80 or the F80A, the F80, the F80, F80, F80C, you have those kind of planes, um, which all have a pretty similar plane style. And then of course the F100, F4, slightly different, but you know, same principles. Um, now our problem with this is that you can kind of consider it as a baby hunter. So I'll go here with head on with the Mega I honestly don't realise he's actually going head on with me until later because he was quite slow. And so uh, uh, the speed wise I thought uh, you know he was going away so I can need to kill him. So here I actually put in kind of like a comparison um, of the acceleration of each uh, of these planes here. So I have the swift bottom left which um, by this point has a compressor upgrade the Metro Mark 8 Reaper fully spaded I believe but I don't have it lifting this nearly this spaded and the 106 bottom right which is fully spaded and essentially there's like a chase or a race sorry to 800 km per hour uh, which um, you know just wanted a comparison obviously they aren't the same VR the Meteor Mark 8, currently the video is lagging a lot for that one, um, is as low as PR. But then I thought, you know, the Swift is an 8.3 plane and it's being like faced against uh, the thing that leads to this. The one I have there is quite close to being speeded. Um, I just wanted to see how, you know, how it accelerates. So obviously, 106, and no spuds there, got to 800, and that's like 800 is the limit to where, so after 800 comes per hour, the Hunter is far faster, it accelerates really well. Um, so we just have um, the Meteor and the Swift left. And the Swift surprised me because, um, first of all, I didn't think it was slightly faster, but either way, it feels fast. And uh, it plays well. And now we just have the uh, Meteor Mark 8, still trudging along. The Meteors are known for being slow now, even before they were slow. Um, still going slowly but surely. Yep, I realized I should have done the Swift Mark 7 and also put in here for good measure the Make 19S because that's just funny. I mean, look at how fast it accelerates, obviously not now. But I stopped the recording at 100 km per hour and it actually takes less time for the Make 19S to get to 100 km per hour than they all do getting to 800 km per hour. I say 100 or 1000, I meant 1000. And then it was still accelerating the MiG 19S. Um, but uh, the Swift doesn't face the MiG 19S, nor does it face actually the Hunter F6, which is perhaps for the best, seeing how much of a monster this is. I mean, look at, look at that acceleration. It's something else. Um, but this is good. I might make a video just specifically on the MiG 19S and its buffs later on, but look. Like, already at a thousand. Either way, we're in the second game with the Swift. Now you might have noticed, or you might notice later, that I took out stealth belts in this game, but that was just because basically I know how to aim the Aidens, but it was a bit off, so because I'm used to the Aidens, I just thought self should put it back so I can make my shots. So you see a lot of embarrassing missing and spraying, uh, but I suggest if you're having problems aiming, you should go for self with a bit. You will for a couple of games, you just miss your shots, but soon you'll get them. You see here, I do get a kill with self rounds, but I do a lot of missing. Now, I feel like the shots I did there, if I had cans on the nose, I would have actually got the shot right at the bottom. But you can see here, the Swift turns well, but not as good as the Mickey Team. The Mickey Team um, it's quite a movable plane, and uh, it was 50 
see I just spray a lot. So I don't even know which target I'm doing. So I have three targets. Um, that is the problem of choice. And then I go for this naked team. Now I like lots in this game. But I'm trying to shoot like here. I would have had the shots. Um, that's a shame. Like, but what can you do? You see here as well. Just how much naked team turns. Now, like I said, the swift is more maneuverable than the hunter. Uh, which I mean, I don't know if that's a fair comparison because they're both two different planes. But, I mean, if you want a maneuverable plane, you have to need to. If you want fast plane, with the hunter. If you want plane in between, go for the swift. And the swift, I mean, this is completely stock swift apart from the belts on the status points. And talking about research, it was just the thing I'll show you later about research and just general economy with the swift, which probably won't stay the same for a long time. So, you see here, essentially what the Swift is, is just showing the capabilities of the Swift as a dogfighter, as you know, going in and out, engaging enemies. Had I known how to aim, I would have got far, far more kills in this game. Actually, the sounds are good as well. You can see here, you know, just a naked kill. We probably won't got them anyway. But, uh, I finally get the kill. It was a satisfying kill. Um, but, like I said, the Aidens do the damage. As you can see here, the mix headed team as well. Hey, yes, I think I saw one that I burner, the premium one. Um, it's right behind me, but just the movability of this plane, it's very easy to um, reverse someone. I don't actually get the kill here. Uh, because, it's like, that Saber literally just got him. And we would have probably got him anyway. Uh, had he just not been absolutely obliterated, but, uh, you know. So, the Swift obviously, you know, essentially kind of midway between the Meteor and the Hunters. And uh, I like it, it is very nice. It's kind of like, can I say it's a Sabre? I don't feel like I should say it's a Sabre, it's all obviously very different things, but at its battle rating, it is fast. So it's, it might be the fastest it could be, but don't quote me, it is fairly fast. Um, but it's, uh, you know, not as maneuverable as some other jets. It's going to be open as well, but it's got a bit of it. And the cannons do the work. <coughs> Obviously, they don't do the work when I'm aiming, because I can't aim. But they do the work. So in this game here, I'm just looking around and see targets. I think I'll have to waste you in, because I'm going to get that kill in the game. But you can see there, had I aimed better, if more, more used to this particular plane, I would have got far more kills. So now we're in uh, this map operation in Poland. It's a good match. And again, you just see the capabilities of this plane. So I think I switch out. Yeah, I switch out to uh, a target so I had enough of stealth. I mean, as you saw. Um, but in here, I just try to go for like a rush tactic. And, you know, I get far. But also, you might have noticed virtually in every single game I played I got up tiered and I mean I think in the last game I get down tiered fight like F-ATCs um, what else is there? Big 9s um, but you do get up tiered and that's because basically all the good planes at 8.3 you get down tiered to 7.3 but playing 7.3 I'm fighting 7.2 6.7, 6.3 things like the water the Arado C3 essentially what like, the battle rating system, people complain about this as well. The battle rating system, people complain, why aren't I if I'm at 5.7, getting equal matches to 5.7, 6.7, and 4.7 to 5.7. That's because different battle ratings are more popular. So you look at, uh, for example, planes in 9.2, 8.7 region, you have things like mixing this, very popular. The German one was popular, you didn't really face those in the Swift. But things like uh, the Ish and the MiG-17 AS, there are two premiums, one of them is new as well, there's like, cool, the MiG-17 is Alphabox, wow, and missiles. Um, so obviously, people are going to play those, you're going to fight them quite often. And, uh, you know, you have other things, such as Javelin, etc. Which are planes that people, you know, Javelin is being down to, people are starting to play that a bit more. So you notice that you do get a lot of uh, 
uh, matches beating uh, April, uh, April 7, 9.2, to see if it's etc. Now, like I said, the last match was against um, Lewitted, uh, not Tanks, Planes. That was like, my only match um, that I actually got in that. So, before you think, oh, look how fast it's going to be, completely obliterate three 7.3 jets, like the quarter of that um, that's what they're afraid. So here you see um, there's an IL-28, I'm very careful with the turrets. Um, I'll go for burst and I destroy him. So obviously the self thing works. So now you see kind of the problems with this plane. So uh, this is one of the first few matches where I tried to just rush into the enemy for the thoughts. Um, this thing is fast at sea level good canvas for head-ons etc um, and uh, you know high altitude just doesn't like it just it's like a kind of like a, you're in an armchair basically at a high level like, you can scoot along in the armchair but you're not in a jet and the acceleration is poor so I mean I it's hard to rush in when no one else is rushing in because you're just going to get um, isolated the whole team um, behind you which is what you're going to see here I like the goes head on. Um, I haven't really got the head on yet, um, which is kind of silly because I had it in the hunter when I didn't have it. I knew the hunter had I was getting head on doing it. How did I miss that? But I look behind me, and even that fight in MiG 17, etc., are so big. That's probably because he climbed. And you can also see here the movability of this plane, like, lob the missile, and the easily dodge another one. Um, don't know what happens there, to be honest. But then I turn because I know I'm slower. Um, there's no way that I can outrun in this top lane. Um, then I try and go back to my team, but um, that missile is not in there. But like, I mean, everyone's getting up on me. And that's the problem. You can't really climb with the swift, you can't really rush in. So this is the final game, I believe. Unless I made a mistake with the video. I think it's a final game. Uh, and like I said, this is the complete um, bottom tier, low tier, down tier, that's what I want. And as you can see, I'm accelerating fairly well. Obviously, I took off there a while back, and I found some big map. But this is good speed, especially for an 8.3. And even for things like 8.7, 9.2, this is a decent speed. And I'm rushing in again, because I think the rushing in tactic. If it's done well, it does work with the Swift. Now I'm just uh, I'm just uh, pause the video there. It's whilst I sorted out a few things in the background, it was lagging a bit. I was kind of confused what happened there. Uh, the Swift is an interesting thing to fly, though, that's for certain. It's tough to fly as well. Like all jets are kind of difficult to fly, but the Swift has its own quirks. Actually, one big thing I forgot to mention is that it doesn't have an air brake. And at high speeds, all your movement skills, there's no way you're as movable. Go for the TU4. TU4, obviously, those turrets are nasty. You can see him you know, spray with this. Um, so I like, I, I just obliterate him. I spray a little bit. I think TU4 you can know, spray. You don't want to be like, if I, for example, pulls a something like a MiG 17, MiG 15, even MiG 19. And you know, I missed the shots. Okay, fine, I have another sh shot. The T4, if you miss, you're dead. And also, you see here, like a F89. The F89s are ridiculously powerful. Um, again, I'm just trying to um, remove any lag here. The F89s are super strong. Though this one gets a bit by a T4. Um, but as you see later on, I have six actual gold accounts. I think they are important. I've seen one with the F2 Saber I've heard. Um, <coughs> sorry. But as you saw, T4 uh, gets obliterated. And I didn't want to go for him because I was in you know, like, the, the sweet spot of primary. Um, you might have seen my HG once I was in the video. If someone's. If you're in a bomb mode with the red turrets and things right behind you, they're dead. There's, there's no way. It's just a race to see who kills the other one first. So again, I should have to go for T4. But even though this F-89 is one full battery rating lower, it's still faster and he has better cannons, so I don't know. 
if you can see, see at this like altitude, I really, really struggle to accelerate. Like it is tough, and that's like all these factors come together to just say you know, swift, low altitude, high altitude, you know. You compress at high speeds, okay. That means don't dive. You can't accelerate um, properly at high altitudes, don't play. Good top speed, good acceleration at sea level, it's at sea level. Like, there's no point in climbing. And with jets you can get away with not climbing as well, it feel good. So here right now in this patch I'm just trying to you know, find another time. I've got myself two four kill. The first one for a fair while and they are quite tough. Remember when they were first added, they were at six foot seven. Yeah, I think it was six foot seven. I'm just there. This was the point when I was trying to grind out my Hunter F1 with my Spitfire, just to mark this two. And they just end the games. I don't want to fight them. Either that's the of time. I was there for a while as well, you know. So again, my computer isn't the best. I'm just trying to cut any background processes, which is just like, ah, he's recording. Let me just, uh, you know, start up doing some intensive stuff in the CPU. You know, please. There must be a movie page. But either way, yeah, I don't I don't want to go for the MiG-9 because that's MiG-9 slow. No. I'm going to go for the TU-40 again. Now, you see here I try and go for an angle where it's hard for him to hit. The TU-40 has turrets by the way. It has like two cannons at the front. Um, but I try and go for the side angle but I don't do it well. And uh, I still end up as like behind him and he lights me up uh, I light him up more and he's like he survives a full on blast of agents I still think I noticed with the F-80 you know, with the uh, Scorpion Swift is that his damage model is kind of weird but look at all, all of those patches on the bottom left like how is the wing like split into different parts it might be because it's a new plane and so they wanted to you know make it the damage model more detailed so you know, different parts affect the plane differently so just bring damage models like parts of the wing but I don't know so as you can see we are kind of uh, searching around for the last guy I thought we got the airfield you know he wasn't and this guy has like zero uh, zero um, score so I thought he might just be like a bomber T4 going right off because I only saw three T4s so there was a T14 honestly but I thought so maybe he was just gone so I was going for the mountains and uh, you know you can really feel the lack of acceleration at this battery and uh, no, at this range it's low then what you can see on the top of the see a red dot which is nice because that means I didn't have to go all the way to the mountains and then back see that uh, there's no one there. So it's a MiG-9. Again, that's good because MiG-9, uh, you know, it should be easy to fight the MiG-9 with it. But actually, this guy played it really well. And it also gave me a good chance to just show off how much the Swift struggles at high altitude. So you see here, the guy goes, I go up, he goes up. And he does come for a higher energy state. But look how easy, how high he goes, look how easy he turns. I'm struggling, this is full speed. You know, I'm doing my rudder, laps, everything just to try to position myself, but to no avail. Yeah, I have basically nearly stalled it in order to get to him. Like, fair play to the Mini 9, he obviously like, he was outmatched at this point, um, but he does well. We can also see just how much this struggles. It's not like I have really a few, I have 3 minutes of few. I nearly ran out during this fight, um, but the Swift and high altitudes do not go well together, which is a shame. Uh, but, you know, let's hope it's good for a cheeky AA uh, to get hits, which is kind of annoying, but either way. So, I mean, at this point, I'm kind of annoyed with my team because I literally, this MiG-9 is like in a perfect position to be killed by someone else you see he does well because he doesn't go straight away from me he kind of goes the zoom kind of to me so conserving the speed and he does well he tried to you know, get some but again the swift just does not want to play 
at these uh, at these um, uh, altitudes. And so, essentially, the team comes in finally, and we, uh, you know, spoil it, and she's finishing off. It was only MiG 9 after all. Although, it's kind of weird how this ended up because MiG 9 stalled the F 84, shoots him, and he misses, and he crashes. Um, it's kind of annoying because I wanted to finish off the MiG 9, but whatever. So, just before I end the video, um, there is a reason why you might want to get this fifth right now. That's because it's cheap. It's literally 80, no, 99 RP, 99,000 RP for an 8.3 jet, which is decent. And then 500,000 to buy and crew, which again, it's like, this is, this is good for this jet. But the real, like, interesting thing as you will soon see is that the modifications are super cheap. They are cheap. So, all those kills in the videos are the only kills I've got so far um, with this thing. I know which is embarrassing. Um, but look, I already have the compressor, and that's my second upgrade. Just look at this. So I already had the offensive 30 mm got the compressor. Now I was choosing between airframe or boosters, so go for boosters. Then <laughs> one go with the eagle to finish that. And then look, I'm ready in tier three. And that's because I mean, 800, like 8,000 RP for modification, tier three modification. Like I had a look at the other stuff, like props. Uh, you know, it depends which modification. Some of them are around about that one. But, like, definitely this is far easier to research than tanks. I'm pretty sure soon with the economy changes, this is going to get buffed, unearthed. Well, I don't know, buffed, unearthed. But, like, that is around about the same level um, of RP for modifications as late props. So, either way, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy uh, and see you soon. And uh